Hello and welcome back to the Coin Stories podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Brunel, and I'm talking to leading voices in Bitcoin and macroeconomics about their origin stories, Bitcoin headlines and news topics, and this movement to fix the world by fixing the money. This podcast does not provide financial advice. Before I share this week's episode, here are some messages from my sponsors who make this show possible. First of all, are you ready for Bitcoin 2023? I certainly am. This year's Bitcoin conference was absolutely amazing. I got to spend a week in Miami with tens of thousands of Bitcoiners from around the world. And I'm so grateful that I had the chance to anchor Bitcoin Magazine's live desk and MC the main stage. If you missed the event, you can catch all three days of incredible Bitcoin content over on Bitcoin Magazine's YouTube channel. And also, it's never too early to start making plans to attend the next conference. Bitcoin 2023 tickets are already available and super early bird rates do not last long. So you can visit b.tc slash conference slash 2023 and secure your pass before prices increase. This show is also powered by OKCoin, my favorite place to DCA without the crazy fees. OKCoin recently launched an amazing initiative called Crypto for All, which is aimed at democratizing knowledge and access to Bitcoin. OKCoin is one of the fastest growing and most secure global cryptocurrency exchanges that serves all your needs for Bitcoin and is committed to investing in educational content, funding crypto developers and entrepreneurs from underrepresented groups, and helping more diverse talent work on crypto ecosystem projects and careers. OKCoin has actually contributed more than a million dollars to Bitcoin core devs and counting, has one of the most active lightning nodes and recently launched Sats Mode. To open an account and start stacking, head to okcoin.com slash Natalie and get $50 in Bitcoin when you sign up. All right, this is a very special and unique episode where I will be doing a reading of a children's book about Bitcoin. I was sent this book, Bitcoin for Kiddos by Chris and Frida Bobay, and I thought it was so well written and beautifully illustrated. And I love the idea of getting kids involved in Bitcoin and understanding Bitcoin as early and as young as possible. But also, this is a good book for adults as well. It tells the story of money and Bitcoin in the most simplistic way and has a glossary of terms at the end. So I'm going to be doing a visual reading. I got permission from the authors. And then after it, you'll hear from the authors. I did a short interview about why they wrote the book and what their mission is. So Bitcoin for Kiddos, the story of Bitcoin. To our children, Benjamin and Emma, whose future is more important to us than anything else, and to Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert for first introducing us to Bitcoin many years ago. Thank you. I've heard from so many people that the Kaisers were the ones that introduced them to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is something, yes, something quite rare. You won't find one in your pocket or under your chair. It's much more than money, but weighs as much as a thought. You can buy anything with it. And over time, it appreciates a lot. It was created in a time when the world was in crisis. It grew to be something quite rare and something quite priceless. The media fought over it and called it a scam, but year after year, it dominated the land. Governments lied and said Bitcoin had no worth. They banned it and unbanned it since almost its birth. But the people you see were smarter than that, and something inside of them kept saying, I smell a rat. So they did their own research and studied at length the history of money and what once made it great. Down the rabbit hole, they called it, when clarity struck. No more searching was needed, no more blaming bad luck. Money is money and currency is different. Money is value and creates great wealth, while currency is paper that robs your financial health. Once the secret was out and the next crisis struck, the people were happy they no longer had to pass the buck. The governments panicked and kept printing their paper. They promised the people that soon they would taper. But the people were wise and had studied the past. They took all that paper and bought Bitcoin fast. A new world was born and governments lost their power to control the people's future from their ivory tower. No more were the people slaves to those men and the currency they manipulated to their own end. Over time, governments concluded the people were right. They began buying Bitcoin. No more reason to fight. 
The idea of Bitcoin kept empowering others until everyone had it, all sisters and brothers. It became the one thing that united us all and the world became peaceful once and for all. More about Bitcoin, an amazing glossary. I just think this book is absolutely wonderful. I hope everyone gets a copy. I've linked it in the description. And now here's an interview with the authors, Chris and Frida Bobe. Okay, so first of all, I would just want to say thank you so much uh, for sending me the book, first of all, and for writing it, because I think it's going to help so many people. Yeah, yeah great. Of course. Thanks. So tell me a little bit, first of all, about yourselves. You obviously have children. Otherwise, you wouldn't write Bitcoin for kiddos, right? So give me a little bit of, of a background so that people are introduced to both of you. Sure. So yeah, we, have, uh, we are just a regular California family. We have two kids, one and a half and four years old. And uh, Chris really was the first one to dive deep down the, the rabbit hole and uh, of Bitcoin. And I thought he was crazy and he was gambling and you know doing weird stuff. And um, then about a year and a half ago, I came down that rabbit hole with him. And based off that, you know, I was thinking about, we really need to educate our kids on this. The subject of money for me growing up was always something that was a little bit of a taboo. And so I wanted something different for my kids. And so that's how this creation came about. Yeah, and uh, I was born and raised in California. Uh, both my parents were entrepreneurs. Uh, they both had their own businesses independently of one another and were successful and um, taught my brother at a young age the value of uh, math and engineering and um, understanding how to start and run a business and the value of uh, proof of work, if you will. And uh, we're kind of an international couple. Uh, we met in high school. Fried is a was a foreign exchange student from uh, Berlin, Germany. And uh, for me, it was love at first sight. And I kind of uh, followed her around until uh, we started dating. And um, we stayed together ever since. And uh, since then, we, when we got married, went from Northern California to Southern California. And we kind of been moving south ever since and trying to experience the world. And as we've traveled around and used different currencies and experienced different lifestyles, uh, we realized that, well, when I saw Bitcoin, it was kind of one of those aha moments and uh, immediately uh, stuck to it and started learning more about it and uh, going deep, deep, deep down that rabbit hole and central banking and money printing and all those things you talk about on your show all the time. And uh, when we had kids, Frida said, you're so good at telling stories, you should write a kid's book, uh, which at first I thought was a very daunting task. But over the course of a year of kind of thinking about it, um, the idea finally came to me and uh, I sat down and wrote the book. And then after the, the, the story was written, Frida and I sat down over the course of several weeks and started drawing out the pictures and trying to make it relatable to children and relatable to adults and uh, young adults. And um, the book was finally finished and we published it last August and sent you a copy of it. And uh, the rest is kind of history. Yeah, so is this book for kids or is it for adults? Because, you know, it goes over these topics that are so complex that honestly, even when I was picking up, you know, Bitcoin books for the first time, a lot of it was over my head and I needed to sort of have it be as simplified as it really is in your book. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we always say it's a conversation start, starter, no matter what age you are. Um, you know, the, the, the illustrations in there are very childlike. And they are meant to be relatable for kids. You know, a lot of kids actually have seen our book and have sent us drawings back about their interpretation of things, which is kind of cool. So there is a conversation to be had with the kids based on the drawings. But then the words of it all or the bigger concepts, that's definitely for adults. So we always recommend, we have done this ourselves, to give this book to friends of ours that are actually not orange pilled, but have kids. And so they are, you know, reading it to their kids and then automatically in the process, actually come back to us and ask questions, which is always kind of interesting. And then, you know, we leave it laying around on like the coffee table, in the bathroom or whatever. So you definitely get responses from adults leaving it out just because of the title. People will open it and look at it. Yeah, I mean, I, when, I, when I wrote the book, I wanted it to be something that was kind of uh, kind of engaging for adults and children. And like Frida said, a, a conversation starter. Uh, the pictures and the words, there's so many different rabbit holes that you can go down and so many different things that you can look at and study and have conversations about um, with your kids or with friends or adults that uh, it's really for everybody. 
but we wanted to do something that allowed adults to, uh, adults to start the conversation with their kids, no matter what age they were, so that it could be a learning process for everybody to, to understand how money works and how it's used to manipulate our day-to-day decision-making processes and then how Bitcoin can be used to kind of free up our time and our minds and our abilities uh, to be able to move through life in more of a way that's um, what the individual is looking to, to take out of life. Uh, because the way that the fiat system is, is set up, it's really kind of puts you in a, in a cage, if you will. And as we're seeing with uh, the war and um, over the last 12 years since the great financial crisis, is that money has been used as a manipulation tool to kind of steer people in different buying patterns. And with an increased inflation rate, basically what that means is you're incentivized to spend your money as soon as you get it versus saving your money. And you see that that even more when I was a kid, we were able to get four to five percent with uh, our money in a savings account. And now you get zero percent. And then when you put the real inflation on top of that, you're upside down 15 percent. So, um, again, we wanted to create something that was more of a conversation starter, not necessarily a start and an end to a Bitcoin journey, but more of something to provide ideas and inspire uh, kids and adults to look at what's happening in the broader world around them and then how they can affect that to have their lives become better. Well, I love all of that. And just to kind of wrap it up, um, why do you feel that it's really important to start this education as early as possible and really to help kids understand our monetary system and Bitcoin? You know, we got that question yesterday. And I, I think the, the real answer to that is when kids are young, they're, they don't have many of the biases that adults have. Um, and so their approach to things is a little bit more open-minded. And so their ability to grasp concepts without having any of the, the noise around the, the concept um, really allows them to think about things in a, in a clearer way. And as they go through the world and as they grow up and they learn more, they can they, they notice things in a different way because they've been their, their mind has been opened up to those concepts much earlier. And so when they come up, as they get older, they're not intimidated by them and they're not afraid to speak their mind or afraid to actually see what could actually be going on versus what somebody else is telling them what's going on. Yeah. So I can, you know, for example, give you a good example from my childhood where money has always been in existence in my upbringing, but it was kind of a taboo subject to talk about. And so growing up in that environment, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, you make it, you pay with it, but I didn't have any background in it. I didn't understand, you know, what it really meant or, and, and it kind of gave me a freedom once I understood more. And then definitely once I dove into Bitcoin, it gives you sort of a mental freedom, right? And so like to give that to kids early on, or even to dare as an adult to come back to that question, what is money? You know, a lot of adults, um, even our age and older might not know that. And just to be child childlike, and go and dive back into that subject, I think is so important for mental freedom in a way. Yeah, money is a tool. It can be used for good or evil. And it's important for us to recognize how that tool is being used for us or against us at any particular time. 